hail, which will cause the seed to fail, and rain. And when we go to a map of the central United States, it's these states right here, which uh, some have been affected by the floods already and will be further affected when the snow from that bomb cyclone begins to melt and further add onto these historic flood waters. I know that I shared the following quote yesterday, but in order to give you an idea of the scope of the losses we are looking at, I want to share it again. As of December 1st, producers in states with flooding, including South Dakota, Nebraska, Kansas, Minnesota, Iowa, Missouri, Wisconsin, and Illinois, have 6.75 billion bushels of corn, soybeans, and wheat stored on their farms, 38% of the total U.S. supplies available at that time, according to the U.S. Department of Agriculture. And remember, the flooding is just getting started. In just one county in Iowa, 1.8 million bushels of corn and soybeans have already been destroyed. Nationwide, the losses are off the charts. Needless to say, prices will be going way up at grocery stores, and they will keep going up for the rest of the year. Sadly, even after the floodwaters are gone, the damage that has been done to our agricultural infrastructure will take years to repair. Famines and pestilences. As the waters began to recede in parts of Nebraska, the damage to the rural roads, bridges, and rail lines was just beginning to emerge. This infrastructure is critical for the U.S. agricultural sector to move products from farms to processing plants and shipping hubs. The damage to roads means it will be harder for trucks to deliver seed to farmers for the coming planting season, but in some areas, the flooding on fields will render them all but impossible to use. In Nebraska alone, hundreds of miles of rural roads have been completely washed out, and farmers such as Annette Bloom are having an extremely difficult time just getting to a main road. We are having to travel three miles through pasture and cropland just to get out because our roads are gone, she says. And the cornfields are going to be devastating to get in and plant and get that going because usually we're planting within the next two weeks and it's not going to happen. Many of America's farmers will bravely keep going after this disaster, but for many others, a financial breaking point has arrived. Back in Second Esdras thirteen, Second Esdras chapter fifteen, verse thirteen, they that till the ground shall mourn. So as you can see, uh, no happy days are coming to the United States of America because we're in the last leg of its rulership, and it's a beautiful thing to see all these calamities befall our chief enemy among the heathens, which are the Edomites, the so-called white people, that red Hebrew Edomite. And now I'm gonna close it out with Jeremiah chapter twenty-eight, verse eight, the prophets that have been before me and before thee of old, because those prophets from back then are back here today through the reincarnation. The spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets, and the, the prophets today are doing the same things that the prophets of old were doing, going out there on the highways and byways preaching this word, as well as in modern times, putting up these uh, video epistles on YouTube, both against Slaki and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms, especially the greatest heathen kingdom of all, the United States of America, which again is uh, biblically known as Babylon the Great and spiritual Egypt and Sodom and Gomorrah, of war, civil wars, race wars, um, a nuclear armed World War III, that Battle of Armageddon, which is going to take place in that Middle Eastern region, also known as the Battle of the Valley of Jehoshaphat, which is a uh, ultimately going to culminate in 200 million nuclear missiles, as well as the laser beams from the Chariot of the Most High, which people ignorantly refer to as so-called UFOs hitting the United States and turning it into the biblical lake of fire from sea to shining sea, turning it into an uninhabitable wasteland afterwards, and of evil, historic floods destroying uh, farmers' crops, famines, earthquakes in diverse places, martial law, fearful constellations, signs in the heavens, such as uh, three supermoons happening back to back to back, and of pestilence. So as you brothers can see, 
with each passing day, we're getting closer and closer to the end of this final wicked captivity and um, the beginning of our uh, eternal salvation. So now more than ever, you should have all ten toes down in this truth to make your calling and election sure and make sure you aren't taken out of this truth so close to the end. So with this bit, Salakia, so with this video, I hope any sincere Akim out there that were watching were edified. And as always, I'm going to say a Baba Bowl. Kwam Yasharala. Till next time. Shalom.